Nice. At least I made some progress. Gotta keep working at it. Pickles. I'm more than happy to help, but unfortunately, 
I'm preoccupied with a couple of unsolved cases. So, you'll have to wait your turn. Specializes in explosives. I need your help, mister. You've had quite a few run-ins with Dr. Boom. And with the recent bomb situation, you're bound to find evidence that proves Dr. Boom is the killer. The first case is the Soul Glad Factory Arson case. We found a hammer, a doll, and half a liter of unidentified fluid at the scene of the crime. Our forensics results show that it's a red herring. The second case is the Blue Hour Auction Robbery. A gang of masked thugs broke in, stole a fragment of the Astral Express, and left behind a large hammer, a doll, and a half-dead red herring at the scene. Those are all the details. The way I see it, there must be a link between these two cases that will be the key to exposing Dr. Boone. I trust in your deduction. Which piece of evidence do you think is the deciding one? Wrong answer! The dolls at the two scenes are modeled after Dr. Boom and Dr. Bloom, respectively. They're not the same. Oh, oh gray hair, gray hair. It's been so long, but you haven't changed at all. <laughs> I'm sorely disappointed. But, seeing as you've put in so much effort, I'll throw you a bone. The bomb's not here. This is only a prank I've craftily set up. Hurry, time's running out. You'd better find that real bomb quickly. actor. You can call me the director doll. I often use this name in film credits. If you didn't know, I'm the one who directed the entire farce in Penacone. As the leading man of the show, what did you think? Feel free to share your thoughts. Well, actually, due to the current plot requirements, you're only allowed to say one line. So please try and resist the urge to share your thoughts. for being duped by the masked fools. This screenplay was written by someone named Miss Sparkle. She said she graduated from Sparkle University's film directing and screenwriting program, so 
we instantly hit it off. Who knew that there was no such thing as the film directing and screenwriting program at Sparkle University? In fact, Sparkle University isn't even real! Ah! Sparkle! Since you're done asking questions and I'm done answering, according to the script, I must reveal to you the fact that there's no bomb here at all, thus causing you to want to kick yourself for spending this whole time listening to me prattling on, after which we will part ways. But don't fret, I've also prepared a gift for you. A dream bubble that has the thrilling life and death moments I shared with the beautiful memo keeper. If you haven't seen it yet, you should hurry up and look for Dr. Edward. There's still some time before I explode, so you can take a look around first. Diffuse? No problem. Executing self-diffusing program. This won't take long. Now playing Never Give Up, Never Surrender by the trending superstar Ast Ripley from the Epsilon 12 system. Oh, hang on. Hanakoni's family have not purchased the rights to this song. We can't play it here. How about this? I'll recite it for you. Next up, please enjoy a recital of Never Give Up, Never Surrender. Oh, aha! If you ask me how I feel about you, don't tell me that you pretend not to see. They will never give you up, never make you sad. 
Snakes, they will never give you up, never make you cry. They will never say goodbye to you, never tell lies to hurt you. Praise, aha! Not much time left. I hope I make it. as actual culture. They call them meme... Meme... Yes, meme! That's it! They even have forms. I'm good friends with a meme with sharp teeth and claws. It's very interested in the Sienjo Vidyanara culture. I gave it a Sienjo name, and it was delighted. Oh, speaking of which, I should go and look for it. Mimi the monster has an explosive temper, and it's never been very patient. I hope you can find a real sugar-coated cannonball, I mean bomb. Bye-bye! <laughs>
Is that Firefly? Twenty-eight minutes, forty-six seconds. Twenty-eight minutes, forty-five seconds. Uh, you're here! The masked fools? Huh. So this really was their doing. Since you're here, I'll just keep it short. Just over half an hour ago, I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51 seconds. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the Order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. I've scrutinized it for a long time, but the bomb's design is incredibly unique, as if it's been locked by some mysterious path force. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deactivate it. It's difficult! Time is running out, and she's a master of disguise! And even if we catch her, she won't come quietly! Actually, there might be another way. Do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the Land of Dreams. I think this moment heralds the third time. You may already know that I have no way of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me to perform feats that typical dream chasers can't. As long as I can bear the pain of the Memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Feldspar. I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape, as deep as possible where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. Don't worry. I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends and maybe even make it back safely. At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. I have some words to share with you, though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, suffering akin to death, or a harrowing deathscape. Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make Miri had choices. I also firmly believe that... That when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like light and shadow. We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but it is not today. Since things are going too well, let's 
speed up the countdown. Human life is short. Just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. about other people's safety. What? Why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> you see, everything is possible in this land of dreams. We each came here with our own goals and realized them in unimaginable ways. Regardless if the result was a sweet illusion, or a bitter reality. It was an answer we longed for, day and night. So, why do people choose to slumber? I think it's as you said. Because in the end, we will wake up from our dreams. When I arrived, I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. Tiernan, you can go home now. While the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. It is my honor. I've said many goodbyes. Yet I am glad that this is the first time I speak these words with a smile. But before leaving, I'm sure you all have plenty to say to the Nameless of the past. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Honestly, when I heard the Conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. 
the first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting and the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember. As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow, streaking across the horizon. Brooklyn Tiernan, Rosalina J. and Estella, we raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rail. A toast to history that no longer remains silent. The passionate and courageous pursuit and a voyage that traverses the stars. It wasn't here last time. Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. At least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? Gallagher, we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation, to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. Is the Astro Express ready to depart Penacone? Apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. <sighs> Penacone's nights are long, and there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there... <sighs> we're still managing without it, aren't we? Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you, watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and to the dawn that is finally upon us.
Dreams, well, this is how they're meant to be, plain and simple. <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started. Just like a clock's hands that turn round and round, the start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock. The advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you, and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you. Watchmaker of the Land of the Dreams, nameless of the Astral Express. To Penacone's past, present, future and the child's unwavering dream unto death. With that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way. But ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. that whether it's Mr. Mikhail, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. They were also young ones, stumbling and bumbling around just like us, getting into scraps and mischief, that sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys... Adventures, all the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to, they've lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. Yeah. Maybe that's the precise thing I can't let go of. It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book, if one of its characters keeps running into obstacles and experiences an ending full of regrets, we're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? Because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So, even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But, what if they... and we... aren't really that special? When Mr. McHale sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day, what was he thinking? And if, 
At the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets. Then, what is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm. I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old Nameless's face at the end of his life. And its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after... us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? This is what trailblazing is. Sure. <laughs> I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day we'll all have to face our own farewells. But before that, we still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. I should get back to the Express. Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles.
Do you still remember when we first arrived in Panacone? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. <laughs> come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device Nine. One day, I'll reach it. Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. What do you mean? It's improbable that you've crossed paths with my past self. What I mean is, there is nothing left to retrace there. Only nihility. <laughs> that is true. Our memories make us who we are. And all memories originate from the now. As for the future, <laughs> it's already taking root in the now, isn't it? We both still have our own paths to walk. So let's forge ahead. Hopefully, if we meet again, it'll be beneath clear skies. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Panacone? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? We both still have our own paths to walk. So let's forge ahead. Hopefully, if we meet again, it'll be beneath clear skies.
Welcome to the... Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're finally back. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> Conductor never cries. Pom Pom is never sad. Pom Pom is just, just, just angry. Yeah, angry. No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos. My well thought out timetable completely ignored. If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel. That's right! Pom Pom is just angry! It's not because of Misha, Tiernan, Rosalina, and the rest! It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry, I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But. Let's go, March. It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Pom-Pom would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom-Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom-Pom boarded the Express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom-Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the Express. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But because of our previous encounters, Fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Only two more? Isn't that super? 
super risky. Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again. What? When you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again. Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. It's you! Why were you just in my room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon, especially with those mired memories of yours. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bonajade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk? Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me, just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. To offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? 
to build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question, which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. <sighs> I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities.